قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد you do that three times in the morning three times in the evening اعوذ بكلمات لا تامات من شر ما خلق بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم اللهم انت ربي لا اله الا انت خلقتني وانا عبدك وانا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت and do all of those adhkar every morning and every evening you do them why because you want the the hiv of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you want to be in the protection of Allah if the best of creation did those and he had protection there were angels surrounding him mighty cohorts warriors around him that if anybody threatened him from the ins of the jinn like the one arabi who came up to the message of Allah and he and he found him sleeping under a tree and he said who will protect you now and he said Allah and the man dropped his sword and started shaking and the messenger of Allah put it up and he said who's going to protect you he couldn't say Allah he said go ahead kill me Right? That's an Arabi, you know, the, 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 they were tough people. But he said, go ahead, kill me. The Messenger of Allah didn't kill him. He became a Muslim. But the point is, that man wanted to kill him. And he couldn't. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him isma. He protected him. When he came out the night when Sayyidina Ali took his place, he came out, all of the, the strongest youth of Quraysh, the people of Futuwa, the people of chivalry from the Quraysh, each one of them from each clan had a sword waiting to kill the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He came out, وَجَعَنَّ مِنْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهُمْ سُدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سُدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبَصِّرُونَ This is what he said, وَإِذَا قَرَتَ الْقُرْآنَ جَعَنَّ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخَرَةِ حِجَابًا مَسْتُورًا if you recite the Qur'an, we will put a veil between you and those who don't believe in the Akhirah. And he was completely veiled. He was the invisible man. He came out, they could not see him. They couldn't see him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is, he was doing these things. Why? Because his heart was aware. مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادُ مَا رَأَى His heart didn't deny, it did not lie in what it saw of the haq, of the truth. His heart was awake. It was living. The angels, when they came, they found him asleep and they said, his eyes sleep, but his heart doesn't sleep. The Messenger of Allah's heart never slept. It was always in the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why in, if you came and you, you were with him, then you were immersed in that divine presence. And that's why people, when they were around him, they couldn't do anything but remember Allah. When they left the Messenger of Allah, one of them, uh, Hamdala, came to the Messenger of Allah and he said, Ya Rasulullah, when we're with you, we remember Allah. And, we're, and it's as if we can see the Akhirah in front of us. And then we go home and we, we, we get it with our families and our, and our work and all these things. And we forget. What, why do we do that? And the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's Rahmatan Lil Alameen. He said to him, that this, this is a, a time for this and a time for that. This is the nature of being Bani Adam. Kullukum khata'oon. All of you will make mistakes. Ma sumir insan insanan illa li annuhu nasiya. We forget this is our nature. But we have to be reminded. Now when the heart becomes alive, there's an internal reminder. You no longer need these external reminders. When, when the time comes, when the ma'asiyah is there, you remember Allah. And I'll give you an example, and this is the blessing of the company of the shiuch. When I was in Algeria, because I'm left-handed, when I was studying in, in, uh, Tizi, in Tizi, there was a sheikh there, Sidi Bu Sa'id, inshallah he's uh, protected, but I don't know what happened to him. But he was one of my teachers. And I was in a hall with all these people, and there, there were several people, he was on the other end of the room. And I was eating, they gave some dessert, and I was eating the dessert, and I was using my left hand, because that's habitual for a left-handed person. And, and I looked over and I saw him and he looked at me and then he looked down at my hand. And I knew that I had to be eating with my right hand. I changed hand. Now, whenever I put, put my fork or spoon or anything in my left hand, I see his face. That happens to me. I'm not making this up. I see his face. Whenever I do that, and, and, and I remember. And that's a gift, right, from a teacher who has spiritual authority. That's a gift, and that's the blessing of being in the company of these people, right? You see, the time that I spent with Murat al-Had, Murat al-Had, they call him Shahidun Ghaibun, present and absent at the same time. Because he, he, all he does is remember Allah. All he does is remember Allah. Kani yadkuru 
كان كان رسول الله عائشه رضي الله عنها كان رسول الله ان البخاري كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر الله في كل احيانه he remembered Allah in every state when he got up he remembered Allah when he went to bed he remembered Allah when he put his clothes on he remembered Allah when he tied his turban he remembered Allah when he went out to the marketplace he remembered Allah when he came home he remembered Allah when he bought something he remembered Allah when he sold something he remembered Allah when he went to the masjid he remembered Allah when he stepped put his foot in he remembered Allah and changed feet coming in and out as a conscious human being when he came into the masjid, he did his rakats tahiyatul masjid. And then he stayed remembering Allah. When he left, he remembered Allah. When he went into battle, he remembered Allah. During the battle, he remembered Allah. Hunayn was his day. All of the battles were his days. But he defeated the, the, the Hawazim and all these great Arab tribes. He defeated them single-handedly. When all the Muslims were fleeing, even the best of them, he stayed firm. And then they came back and they routed them. And this is because he was in a state of remembrance of Allah. He saw Jibreel fill the entire horizon. What do you do once you've seen Jibreel? You look out, every time you see the horizon, that's what you'll see. If you had the chance to see Jibreel fill the entire horizon, go out and look at the horizon and imagine seeing the angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill the entire horizon. What are you going to do after that? What are you going to do? Are you ever going to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you going to forget Allah? You can't go to sleep after that. You can't. There's, it's not possible. And this is why the more that we struggle against our souls, the more light that comes in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it inshirah to the breast. Why? Because the heart's growing. It needs more room. It needs more room because the heart is getting bigger. And the bigger the heart gets, the greater power the person has against the forces of evil. And when the heart is powerful, then other people begin to entrain with that heart. Like the clocks, the tick, and the smaller clocks begin to entrain with the sway of that clock. And so when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa present, all of the Sahaba were entrained with his divine heart because his heart was beating for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His breasts were breathing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His movements were moving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when this was happening, everybody was in that state. All of the Sahaba. And the day he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, caused such a trauma in those people that it would take them several generations before they would come back to their senses. That's how powerful his absence only in the physical realm was. And this is what the power of Islam is. It's the power of the human heart. This is what the power of Islam is. It began with the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this to the Messenger of Allah's heart. And it was transmitted to the hearts. And it's been passed on by the hearts. And if the hearts don't wake up, they're going to wake up when they die. When your heart stops beating, it will wake up. And then it's too late. So we have to do something. Don't just come here and then go back to your homes and nothing's changed. Make commitments. How many people are willing to stop in training with the television? Because when you watch television, you're getting these cathode rays beaming out to you. And you're in training with demonic entrainment. These are dark energies that are coming out and putting your heart into a state. And you can watch young children. You just watch them in front of a TV and you go like this. And they can't see anything because they're completely in a state of, of magic. A magical spell has been placed on them. And their hearts begin to entrain with that. And they're getting all of these ideas put in their minds. People have to be willing to do these things for the sake of Allah. How many people are going to commit to praying on time from this day forward? To getting up before the dawn, not at dawn. We have to, be, we have to get into a state where we can call on Allah and Allah will answer us. Because we're in a state now, we call on Allah and it's just like this hadith that Imam Zaid read. This is our state. How is Allah going to answer us? Look at this turkey. The, the, 45 seconds, look at the buildings, completely destroyed. And then all those mosques, and somebody said to me, it's a miracle. It's not a miracle. Those people knew how to build. They weren't cheaters. When they made a contract with the government to build a mosque, they built it up to standard. And whose standard? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger's standard. The standard of Ihsan and Itzqan. And now these, these crooks and criminals that build cement buildings, that the slightest shaking can knock them down. 
Uh, if it was an earthquake on 4.0, it would, they would have all come tumbling down. There's earthquakes of that magnitude in, in Western countries, and you don't see the buildings falling apart. Why? Because they build them up to code and standard. And, and so the tribulation is from our own selves because we cheat and we lie. Who's going to become a person of Ihsan and Itzqan of these people? And then all of those people, really, look at that. It's, it's a metaphor for this time. Those buildings that were built on taqwa, they remained and they, and they go on. And all those other buildings built on ghafla and greed and avarice and enmity and animosity for humanity because no person with a human heart could do that. And the difference between those who remember Allah and those who forget Allah is the difference between the living and the dead. And so you're going to choose each one of you whether you're going to be one of the living or one of the dead.